Have you ever pondered what led to the complex situation in Kashmir? Let's take a step back to the pivotal year of 1947. This was when the British Raj breathed its last in the Indian subcontinent, leading to the birth of two separate nations, India and Pakistan. As the British hastily retreated, they left behind a complex puzzle, the partition, a decision that triggered the largest mass migration in human history, as millions were uprooted from their homes. In the midst of this chaos, the hundreds of princely states scattered across the subcontinent were left with a daunting choice. They could accede to either India or Pakistan based on their geographic proximity and the wishes of their people. people. The rulers of these states, with their people's futures hanging in the balance, were left to make this monumental decision. One such princely state, caught in the dilemma of this choice, was Jammu and Kashmir. So what made the Maharaj of Kashmir accede to India? Let's rewind to the late 40s. The region of Kashmir was ruled by Maharaj Hari Singh, who originally wished to remain independent amidst the partition of British India into two new dominions, India and Pakistan. But things took an unexpected turn when tribesmen from Pakistan stormed into Kashmir. These were not just ordinary tribesmen, but well-armed and backed by the Pakistani military. The Maharaja, faced with an invasion, found himself in a tight spot. This invasion proved to be the tipping point for the Maharaja. His small princely state was ill-equipped to fend off such an aggressive assault. In desperation, he turned to India for help. India, being a newly formed nation itself, was keen on maintaining peace and stability in the region. Yet it was clear that any intervention would not be straightforward. Here's where the instrument of accession comes into play. The Maharaja, in an effort to secure the safety of his people, signed this document, effectively exceeding his state to the Dominion of India. But it wasn't a hasty decision. The Maharaja and the Indian government held intense negotiations before the instrument was signed. India accepted the accession, but with a significant understanding. It was clear that the accession was conditional and temporary. India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, promised that as soon as law and order were restored in Kashmir, the people of Kashmir would be given the right to decide their future. This was to be through a plebiscite, a vote in which all the inhabitants would have their say. However, this plebiscite was not immediately possible due to the ongoing conflict and the necessity of maintaining peace and stability in the region. The promise of a plebiscite, though, was a crucial part of the accession agreement, and it has since been a contentious issue in the region's history. Thus began India's military involvement in Kashmir. But what role did the international community play in this? Well. The United Nations, an international body committed to maintaining global peace and security, was heavily involved. The United Nations Security Council, the organization's most powerful arm, passed several resolutions addressing the issue. The most notable of these was Resolution 47, adopted in April 1948. It recommended a plebiscite, a direct vote by all of the electorate, to decide the future of Kashmir. The plebiscite, however, was never implemented. The reasons were many, including disagreements over the process and preconditions. India and Pakistan, the two nations at the heart of the dispute, interpret these resolutions differently. India views them as outdated, arguing that circumstances have changed since they were passed. It maintains that the issue is a bilateral one to be resolved through dialogue with Pakistan, not through international intervention. On the other hand, Pakistan insists on the validity of these resolutions. It argues that the people of Kashmir should be given the chance to express their will through a UN-supervised plebiscite, as originally outlined in the resolutions. This divergence in interpretation has led to an impasse. Despite the United Nations' involvement and the passing of numerous resolutions, the situation remains unresolved. The United Nations, despite its best efforts, has been unable to bring about a lasting solution to the Kashmir issue, and so the stalemate in Kashmir continued. Fast forward to today, what is the state of affairs in Kashmir? The region continues to be a hotbed of conflict and contention, its tranquility marred by political turmoil. A significant turning point came in August of 2019, when the Indian government decided to abrogate Article 370 of the Indian Constitution, 
This article had once granted Jammu and Kashmir a special autonomous status within India, allowing it to have its own constitution, a separate flag, and independence over all matters except foreign affairs, defense, and communications. With the abrogation, this special status was stripped away, placing Jammu and Kashmir under direct control of the Indian federal government. The decision sparked intense reactions on both sides of the border. India saw it as a necessary step towards integrating the region fully into the nation and ensuring uniformity of laws. Pakistan, however, saw it as a blatant violation of the rights of the Kashmiri people and an aggressive move against the spirit of the United Nations resolutions. The tension between the two countries escalated, with both sides increasing their military presence along the line of control, the de facto border that separates the Indian and Pakistani-controlled parts of Kashmir. The international community watched with bated breath, fearing a potential escalation into a full-blown conflict between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. But amidst this geopolitical chess game, it's the people of Kashmir who bear the brunt of the strife. Their lives have been disrupted by frequent curfews, internet blackouts, and restrictions on movement. The hope for a peaceful resolution seems to be a distant dream, as the voices of the Kashmiri people often get drowned in the cacophony of national and international politics. In the heart of this complex issue, the question of who owns Kashmir remains a contentious issue. The region is more than a piece of land to be claimed. It's a home to millions of people whose lives are intertwined with its destiny. The journey to peace and resolution is a long one, and the path is fraught with challenges. But as the world continues to watch, the hope for dialogue, understanding, and ultimately, peace persists. So where does this leave us? We've journeyed through the partition of India and Pakistan, witnessed the controversial accession of Kashmir to India, scrutinized the role of the United Nations, and examined the current status of Kashmir. Each of these milestones has shaped the intricate tapestry of Kashmir's history and its present. While the future of Kashmir remains uncertain, understanding its past helps us navigate the complexities of the present situation.